object of our story is this Krupp 5 centimeter model 1903 new pattern mountain cannon. This was an export product intended for overseas use. Let's take a closer look at it now. The 50 millimeter barrel is 75 centimeters in length and weighs 135 pounds. At the muzzle is a large offset front sight. At the breech end of the barrel is the adjustable rear sight. Should the cannon be emplaced on uneven ground, this screw and this spirit level are used to cross level the rear sight. On the right hand side of the sight base is the elevating screw. And on its spindle is a throw out lever that allows rapid changes in elevation to be made. This screw is used to put windage to the rear sight aperture. Both the rear sight staff and the cross head are graduated for adjustment. On the right side of the breech, we see the lanyard hookup ring, the safety and takedown knob, and the large lever opens the breech. The 50 millimeter bore is rifled with 20 grooves, right hand twist. The carriage weighs 300 pounds and is a forged Krupp steel. The left side of the carriage carries the elevating hand wheel. The extreme depression that can be put on the barrel shows that this was designed for shooting downhill. The right hand side of the carriage carries the hand spike in its travel position. Also visible is the takedown pin for axle removal. Halfway down the trail are the pin and key that hold the carriage together. Further down the trail is the spade in its carry position and the attaching points for the hand spike. This pin and lever lock the spade into its action position. Now let's look at some of the ammunition for this cannon. Originally, it would have fired a explosive shell of this type against material and entrenched troops. Notice the percussion nose fuse and the copper rotating band. A time fuse shrapnel round would have been used against troops in the open. For close range defense of the gun position, a canister round would have been used. This round is made up of a thin metal envelope containing 150 caliber lead balls packed in sawdust, a devastating round against massed infantry at close range. For modern target practice, we would use this round. The case is made from 40 millimeter Vorifer's brass, cut and turned down. 50 caliber primers provide ignition. The powder charge is made up from three and a half ounces of FG black powder sealed in a plastic bag. These cork wads go on top of the powder to fill up air space in the cartridge casing. As you can see, the projectile is a hollow point two pound lead casting. The point filled with plaster the projectile sized and painted, it is affixed to the case. And that completes our instruction on the ammunition. Now let's pack up the gun and go campaigning. Broken down for pack animal transport, the gun makes three loads. The barrel and wheels on the first animal, the carriage parts on the second animal, 
and the ammunition and accessories on the third. Now let's watch as the weapon is assembled. Prepare to march. March. As the gun is dragged to its position on the ridge, the scene is reminiscent of the battle between the British and the Turks in the desert between Palestine and the Suez Canal. It is easy to visualize the sweating German gun crew supporting the hard-pressed Turkish infantry. Let's watch this gun crew as they place the gun in position and prepare for action. The setting is much like it was at the original battle of Wadi Arish. Prepare for action. A shallow trench is dug to receive the spade that keeps the gun from recoiling excessively. The trench must be long enough so that the trail of the cannon can be traversed left or right to target acquisition. The spade retaining strap is unfastened and the spade is moved from the travel position to the action position and locked in place. The next step is to remove the hand spike from its fastening and install it in its action position. The number three man takes the lanyard and hands it to the number one man while the number two man removes the muzzle cover. The lanyard is attached. Peering through the battery commander's scope, our Turkish liaison officer selects a target well within our 3,000 meter range. You may fire, fellow Babel. The gunner takes his place at the sights and a number three man at the hand spike. First the sights are cross-leveled, then the gun is shifted to target. Range? 1,020 meters. This is a 1.25 meter Gertz rangefinder from World War I. It can range a target out to 15,000 meters. With the data supplied by the range observer, the gunner can set the rear sight to the proper graduation. With the sight set, the barrel is elevated until the sights are on target. Load. Set. Ranging shot. Fire. The first shot is low, forming the lower perimeter of the bracket. The gunner now elevates the piece to find the upper perimeter of the bracket. Ranging shot, fire! Our second shot strikes in line and above the target, forming the upper perimeter of the ranging bracket. With the target now bracketed, it is now a simple matter to fine tune the elevation to put the gun on target. Load! Set. Ranging shot, fire! This final ranging shot shows that some corrections are in order. Set. 
Continuous fire. Fire! At this time, with the target bracketed, the order is given by the NCO to fire on the target for effect. Cease fire! 